the title of today's message is it's God's way or the highway. And, you know, I wanted to say it's God's way or it's the highway to hell. But the Lord said no. But I told you anyways. So he'll probably rebuke me later. But anyways, it's God's way. We have to start doing things God's way. It's God's way or the highway, Jack. And you know what? The body of Christ just hasn't been doing things God's way for so long. It's why we've gotten into the situations that we've gotten into. It's why the world is in the condition that it's in, physically, spiritually, mentally. Do you know there are more people on antidepressants and anxiety meds, and I'm not condemning anyone who's taking them right now. That's not what I'm trying to do. But there's more people on them now that good morning facebook live i already started today's message is it's god's way or the highway but it's you know the body of christ hasn't been walking where it needs to be in the in god's way and the way that we are supposed to be doing things and when we don't do that everybody suffers the body of christ suffers the world suffers because we're not sharing the gospel with people we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing so when we do things God's way, life will go much better for us. Will it be perfect? No, because our Bible tells us that it rains on the just and the unjust, okay? Life happens. We still have to live this life and we have to live in this world, but things will be better. Why? Because when you do things God's way, you have a peace in you that surpasses all understanding. He's with you, and you know you're never alone. That's the difference. When we're going through our trials and our tribulations and things and issues and pain and suffering sometimes, we're not alone. We're going through it with the Lord. Does that make sense? That's why it's so important. But we should be doing things God's way. And sometimes people get into the habit of doing what they want, when they want, and how they want with everything. And then when things aren't going well, they sit there and they're scratching their head. Oh, Lord, well, where are you? What's going on? Why is this happening? And then they blame him. You know what, Lord, you did this. He didn't do anything. Half of us aren't doing what he told us to do in the first place. And then we wonder why things aren't going so hot. And so as Christians, as believers in Christ, we have to start doing things God's way, not ours, not our way. If we continue to follow the world's ways or directions, we're gonna end up confused, disillusioned, and often disappointed in other people and in our own selves, in ourselves. We disappoint ourselves, and then we get mad at ourselves, and then we can't forgive ourselves. And we have to keep doing soul wound healing all over again and over and over again because it's so critical, you know? But we end up on a highway to hell when we choose to live life according to the world's standards. We can turn on the news and see what the world's standards are doing right now. It's not pretty. That's the world. But God's people should be doing it a different way, God's way. So doing things God's way, according to his word, will lead us on the straight and narrow road. Consulting God daily will be very beneficial for us. We have to consult him. So what are some of God's ways? And I'm going to tell you what they are. Jesus told his disciples, he gave the disciples a great commission before he ascended into heaven. But um, don't let anyone ever make you feel bad if you pray about everything. You know, I mean, we don't have to pray about like what sandwich we're going to eat and, you know, but I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to get into this a little bit more in the message in a little bit. But, you know, people overseas, missionaries and third world countries and people that are really doing stuff for the Lord, they do pray about what they eat. And they do pray that nothing they eat will harm them. If there's anything deadly that they consume or drink or eat, that, that it won't harm them. We are able to do that. Uh, do not do anything silly here. It's not what I'm telling you to do. Don't be that guy. Don't, don't point fingers and say, she said you could do, don't, no. 
I'm not telling you to eat anything bad. You know, don't go eat a big chunk of mold and wonder if you're gonna feel sick or not, okay? That's what I'm saying. Although blue cheese is mold. I do like blue cheese, but anyways. I have main points that I'm gonna give you. And how do we do things God's way? Well, point number one, the main point, Mark, open up to Mark 16, chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. Matthew, Mark, second book in the New Testament. For those who are new. Matthew, Mark, Mark 16. Good word. There we go. Maybe. I'm getting there. Mark 16, chapter, or chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. Later he appeared to the 11. Now why is it 11? Because there were 12 disciples. Judas had betrayed Jesus already at this point, and he committed suicide. Jesus was already crucified. He was buried, but he resurrected at this point, and he was appearing to people. So later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So he was walking around and he had appeared to people. Some people didn't believe it. And so he was rebuking their hardness of heart at that point and their unbelief. And he said to them, the red words of Jesus, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And, they, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you hear that? They will recover. So we're gonna break this down step by step, okay? So number one, Jesus said, go. He, he told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is called world evangelism, okay? So Jesus seeks those who will serve him without seeking self recognition and who will selflessly be obedient that will exalt him and will make him known to others. That's our job. That's your job. Your job is to go out, to go into all the world and let people know about God. Let them know about Jesus. That's, that's our job. Okay? Amen? He wants us to tell others about him and extend the love of God to others. That's what he wants us to do. He's all about love. He wants us to tell others not just about him, but who he is and, and to teach them about his ways, God's ways. He wants people to know. Number two, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. This is very simple. Belief means or equals inward receiving of Jesus. When you believe, you receive him inwardly in your heart. Okay, baptism is that outward testimony of belief. Now, what am I talking about baptism? Yes, there's baptism of the Holy Spirit, but there's water baptism. And if you look back in the Bible, they would get the people, they would share the gospel with them, they would get them saved, and then they would baptize them in water. And why? Because it's an outward expression that you're telling God, I'm going to follow you. Down with the old man, up with the new. It's a renewing. And so it's a demonstration. But it's clear, though, that those who will be condemned in the future are those who do not receive Jesus Christ. It's that simple. And I'm going to clarify some things because there's a lot of fear in the body of Christ that people are petrified that they're going to stand before Jesus one day and he's going to condemn them to hell. The only people that will be condemned, based on our word here, are those that do not receive Jesus. They'll be offered the opportunity, but there are people that will refuse. 
that's where the, the condemning comes in, okay? Number three, signs will follow those who believe. So in his name, do you notice number one is in his name, they will cast out demons. There's a lot of people in the body of Christ that don't like this one. Number two, they will speak in new tongues. Do, would you see they? Who are they? You are they. 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 They, 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 they. You are they. You will cast out demons. You peoples will do it. They will speak in new tongues. If they take up serpents, they can cast them off. Do you remember Paul? He, a serpent came up, bit his hand. He shook it off. You can do that. Shake it off. Don't play with snakes. Some people like to play with snakes. I'm not... I am not telling you to play with snakes, okay? I don't like those. My sister used to say, you know, how she felt about snakes. And she would say that they would slither up and they'd look at her and they'd go, <laughs> and, she, and I was like, Linda, they don't make a noise. So they had a little tongue, that forked tongue looking at me. She'd go after them with my mother's boot and whack them on the head. That was how she did it. But she walked in her authority. She wasn't going to let the snakes intimidate her. They were trying to get into her home. Number four, if they drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. Do not intentionally drink something bad. Okay? And don't come back and say, well, she said, no, don't do that. But if you happen to be somewhere and that water is not clean or something ain't right, bleed the blood of Jesus over that thing and, and thank God that nothing will harm you. All right? Some people have to live like that in other countries. We don't. We have, you know, in the United States of America, we have very clean water. Number five, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's funny how Jesus said in his name, and notice how it's in his name, in the name of Jesus, they will cast out demons, number one. Later on, he talks about how they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Sometimes you got to cast the demons out. The demons of infirmity come up and out of the person before they'll get healed. You see what I'm saying? Pastor Linda often did that. She would, you would often hear her uh, rebuke and cast the demons out before the heal, she would pray healing. So this mandate was meant to be continual, okay? Jesus didn't give the Great Commission once, and it was for just those apostles and disciples. It wasn't. It was meant to be not for one generation, but to go on continually, generation after generation after generation, even today. So say today, today. I, can I can cast out demons, cast out demons. In, his in his name. I can, I can. lay hands on the sick and, and they will recover. See, do you see what I'm saying? This, these are God's ways. This is God's way of doing things. In Matthew 28, 18 through 19, Jesus tells them that all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth, to Jesus, okay? And in verse 19, he says, to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. See the Trinity there? Jesus talks about it right there. So God wants us to make disciples. Disciples are to be taught kingdom principles and life so we can think, live, and pray his kingdom here on the earth and over the earth. Amen? Over the entire earth. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And being a disciple is intentional and it's active. You are intentionally being his disciple. You are choosing to be a disciple. And it's active. It's something you have to participate in. I can't make you be a disciple. You have to do it. Point number two, Colossians 2, 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. I'm going to break this down a little bit for you. A, we walk in him. Walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Okay? Do the will of God. B, be rooted, planted like a tree near the water. Be rooted in his word, 
planted in the Bible, preaching, believing church. Full gospel, okay? We preach the whole thing and they do it. C, built up teaching church. You want a church that builds you up, that lets you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You want a church that's telling you, you got the power in you. You can do this. You want to be built up and encouraged in the things of the Lord. Amen. You do not want me up here smacking you over the head, telling me, telling you and me and someone, everyone telling everybody that you're bad. You're no good, you dirty rotten. That's not building people up. You gotta edify each other, build each other up, strengthen each other. Ron, you're a mighty man of God. Amen. See, I built him up there. And you're handsome, Ron. Okay, I love Ron. Lou doesn't mind. D, you want to be established in the faith. Okay, you want to establish yourself in the faith. And E, you want to give him thanks and be thankful for everything he has done. It's, an, it's a heart of gratitude. Okay, we should be thanking God every morning. Father, I thank you. I just love you. I worship you. I thank you that I woke up this morning. If I'm going, I thank you, Father. Yep, I got breath in my lungs. I thank you, Father. I thank you for everything you have done for me. I thank you that you have given me food to eat. I have a bed to sleep, sleep on. I have a, a roof over my head. I have people that love me in my life. Thank, thank him for every little thing. You get in your car. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for these wheels, man. Thank you. Thank you for letting me get to point A to point B so I don't have to ride on a pony to get there. You know, they had to do that one day at one point. My point being, be, great, be grateful to our God, okay? Be gracious and grateful. Reflect his character in the things you do and say. That's how we do things God's way. We walk in union with him. And then we do things the way that he would want us to do them. And, and if we're doing that, we should live our life in a way that's leading others away from sin and moving toward God. Okay? That's how we should be living our life. Point three. God's way is to bear much good fruit. We're going to open up to... Did I write it down? That'd be nice if I did. I did. Luke 8, 15. I made it easy on myself. But the ones, Luke 8, 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. Oh, we all love that word, don't we? Patience. <laughs> None of us are. That's not a good one for us. We don't like that one so much. But we have to bear fruit be fruitful with patience and keep it. We need good fruit in our thoughts, in our attitudes, and in our actions. I'm going to give you some of the good fruit. Okay, here's some good fruit for you. Love, number one. Peaceful, being peaceful, being joyful, having goodness in your heart, being a person of justice, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, thinking of others more than yourself, putting others first. Those are all, that's all signs of good fruit. You know, we're not supposed to stand in judgment of each other, but we're supposed to look at each other's fruit and examine the fruit. My sister had no trouble telling me sometimes, your fruit stinketh. I said, okay, thanks, Linda. So she would say, you're being this, or you're, you know, Maria, come on, where's your fruit, where's your fruit? And so, you know, we have to inspect our own fruit. I'm one of those people, I don't really want people to have to inspect my fruit and tell me. I'd like to inspect my own fruit and be like, oh, that was ugly. That wasn't good. I'm not walking in love here. Now, here's some examples of bad fruit. Being selfish, proud, being greedy, angry, envious of others, gossiping, unkind, having hatred in your heart or being hateful, being, putting yourself above others. That's bad fruit. Being self-centered. You know, our Bible tells us in the end times, men will become lovers of themselves. That's self-centeredness. We're seeing a lot of that, aren't we? Ugh. 
So we know we're in the end times. We don't know the day or hour, but we know we're in the end times. Main point number four, God's way is loving God first and loving others. Matthew 22, chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. I feel like I did. I wrote this one out too. Look at me. Jesus said to him, red words of Jesus, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is how God wants you to love him. Why? Is he self-centered and self-seeking? No. This is the first and great commandment. And verse 39 says, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's not necessarily just your next door neighbor. But what that means is you're going to love other people unselfishly. And you're going to seek the best or the higher good for others. That's what that means. Amen? See, God is all about love. He's all about love. He wants us to love him because it blesses us and it shows him that we want a relationship with him, that we trust him and we're going to do things God's way. Okay? Point five, main point five, abide in him and his word. That means you're being vitally united with him. And his message lives in your heart. So when you're reading this word, it should be penetrating your heart, breaking that hardness. He cleans us from the inside out, okay? And he does it. And he does it his way. Sometimes we try to get in there. Open up the bi your Bibles to John 15. I didn't mean that as a bark order. If you would please open up your Bible to the book of John, chapter 15. Fifteen, and we're going to read five through eight. Again, the red words of Jesus. Do you notice that I'm reading a lot of what Jesus said? Why? Because that's God's way. He's our leader. He's our master. He's the one we follow. That's who we follow. We follow his ways. And things just go better that way. You know what? Let's go up to... Um, let's just start at verse 1, okay? We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to go down to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. When you have a fruit tree, they trim it back and they prune it so that it'll grow more bountiful the next year. Okay? Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. I'm going to say that again to somebody who needs to hear that today. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can't bear fruit on your own, everybody. You need him. He's the one that helps you bear the fruit, okay? We need him. We depend on him. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Do you see you can ask the Father? Isn't it funny? After praise and worship, he had me telling you, ask him. What do you need from him today? Ask him. If you abide in me 
and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. But you got to abide in him and do things his way. Amen. Verse 8, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That's how we're his disciples. Verse 9 even goes on, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. We have to abide in his love. Further down, Jesus tells us to keep his commandments, obey his teaching. And, and again, this is not to be a harsh taskmaster with us or for us, but it's so his joy, he tells us, may be full and complete and overflowing in us. So he wants us to follow his ways so that his joy is in us to overflowing. See, it's so simple. It really is so simple, but the choice is ours. Main point number six, Psalm 1, 1 through 6, and I'm going to read, uh, I don't have my phone up here. Justin, can you grab my phone for me, my purse? I'm going to read the amplified version of Psalms 1, 1 through 6. It's a whole psalm, but it's short. But I like the Amplified Version. The title of it is The Righteous and the Wicked Contrasted. Contrasted. There's a contrast between the, the righteous and the wicked. And by the way, we are only made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so you have to receive Jesus. That's how we're made righteous. No one is righteous on their own. We start at verse 1. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God. I'm going to say that again. Blessed, which means fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God, is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example. Okay, now what does that mean? Do not take your unsaved friend's advice. Okay, or, or unsaved family members. They're going to give you wicked counsel. That's what the Lord tells you. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Don't be walking with them, okay? Nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers are ridiculers. They ridicule God. Have you ever met anyone who ridicules God? Yeah. They scoff. I hate that. Yeah. I don't like God mockers. It irritates me. And I will rebuke them. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, God's law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. This has to become a habit to meditate on God's word day and night. And he will be like a tree, there's our tree, firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. You've got to be planted in a good house of the Lord. Planted. That means you go to a church and you're planted there. Amen. You belong there so that covering is over you and you're being fed and you're planted. Yeah. When you plant a tree by the water, its roots grow deep. Deep. And it can't be easily pulled up. Do you see what I'm saying? right be planted and you will yield your good fruit in its season right so which yields its fruit in its season its leaf does not wither and in whatever he does he prospers there's that word prospers again and comes to maturity see when you're planted in a good house of the lord under you know i pray for you every day I pray for prosperity for you. I pray for peace. I rebuke the devil for you. Amen. And you'll come to maturity. Because when, you know, I've seen a lot of people in the body of Christ, they bounce. They bounce. And I'm not talking about people that have moved from one church to another. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about you got to get planted. 
Sometimes you have to move and that's okay, but you gotta get planted in where you're being fed the word of God, okay? So you'll come to maturity. The wicked, those who live in disobedience to God's law are not so, but they are like the chaff, worthless and without substance, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand unpunished in the judgment. We kind of talked about that earlier, right? Nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous. He fully approves of you, but the way of the wicked shall perish. I wanted that in the amplified version. So doing things God's way is meditating on his word day and night, not taking ungodly counsel, but godly counsel. And, you know, habitually, not once in a while, all the time, always seeking his face, seeking what he wants. Well, which way do you want me to go here, Lord? You know, there are people that don't go to the Lord about anything. And it's not good, especially when you're making big decisions in your life. How many people get married and they've never consulted the Lord? Oh. <laughs> I didn't expect an answer. To, okay, got a couple of hands going up. Anywho, if, if we consult, sometimes we're not saved at that point and we don't know better. Okay, I'm, I got my hands going. All right. Okay, we have a lot of people who did not consult the Lord and got married. But, you know, when it, <laughs> and divorce. But when you, when you seek the Lord, you know, the Bible tells us, do not be unequally yoked. So, you know, saved people have no business, business marrying someone unsaved. You know, sometimes you start walking with the Lord after you're married, and then you're like, oh, boy, now what do we do with this? But, you know, God will honor that. The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing spouse, okay? So, or, or vice versa. So, um, anywho, anywho, God wants us to consult him habitually. Amen. You know, like I said, you don't have to say, Lord, you want me to have a ham sandwich or you want me to have a turkey sandwich. He's probably like, Maria, what are you in the mood for? Come on, don't bother me with that. No, he doesn't say that. But God does care. He does care. He really does. He has your hairs counted on your head. <laughs> yeah, those of us that uh, had COVID and lose our hair sometimes with high. But I'm gonna tell you, look at all my grays. That's all new growth. Because <laughs> the Lord Jesus is like, come on now, we're gonna grow her some more hairs. Because I've been losing it by the hand. No, really, I'm like gray. Woo. I define my age by coloring it. Okay, so, but I'm, in all seriousness, if you're going to get married or start dating somebody, seek the Father, especially single peoples. They're not paying attention to me. Single peoples. <laughs> seek the Father, okay? Seek the Father. You know, if you think this girl is real cute, boys, she's, oh, she's a cutie pie. She's a cutie pie. And you start talking to her, and she's like, I'm a Buddhist. You're cute, but I got to go with my, what my God wants for me. Oh, she could say, praise the Lord. But do not be unequally yoked. I'm telling you youngins this on purpose for a reason. It's very hard when you're unequally yoked. Things don't go easy. It's very hard. And it's a battle. But when you're equally yoked with a believer, and you're a believer, and, and you know, and, and I mean, even of the same faith, I really believe that. Because, you know, there's different, like, you know, even, I really believe this in my heart, like even different denominations, your ways of thinking and the way you've been taught is different. Yeah. There is a battle there. And so um, avoid it. Just do what the word says. It seems so simple, and yet we don't do it. Do we? No. Okay. Anyways. Point number seven. This is the last one, our final point here. There's many, many, many more ways to do things God's way, but I wanted to give you, like, key things that I felt the Lord putting on my heart. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray 
without ceasing. And you know, when you pray, pray without ceasing and be persistent in prayer, okay? You pray for something, you don't see the result, keep praying. Keep praying without ceasing until you get what you want. Did you ever see a toddler, that they, when they want something in a store, someone, po my cousin posted a, 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 like those memes, and it's all toddlers who didn't get what they wanted, and they're distraught, and in the pictures, they're, they're on the floor, and they'll be like, she's crying like this because I wouldn't let her use toilet water, or I wouldn't let her, you know, drink out of the dog's bowl or something, and toddlers are like, you know, they, they're distraught. But you know, do you ever notice how persistent a toddler is? But I want it, but I want it, but I want it, but I want it. You know, God doesn't want us to be like toddlers, immature, to like, you know, be like that. But he wants us to be persistent like that. Did you ever see a little dog latch onto a toy? And you like pull it with them and they're like, they're chopped down on that thing. That is like a... The body of Christ has to start being tenacious. Do I have vocabulary right here? Okay. Tenacity. When you are praying for healing for somebody, keep going. You know why? Because according to my word, by his stripes, we were already healed. We already, the healing was already done. We got to claim that thing. Do you see what I'm saying? When God says, do this in his word, do it. Do it. Do things God's way and watch how different your life starts turning. Watch how your life starts changing. Watch. Pray without ceasing. Get up in the morning and pray. I pray all day long. It doesn't mean that I'm locked up in a prayer closet all day praying. I don't have time for that, but I'm praying all day. And you know, if something comes up, I pray quickly. Father, oof, I lift up that situation. Someone could be walking across the street and I notice they're walking with a limp. Father, touch that person in Jesus' mighty name. Heal that limp. Touch him, Father. You know, you see someone, you just know things aren't going well. They look sad, they look depressed, they look like they've been crying. Father, heal her. You know, if the Lord puts it on your heart to go up to somebody, then do it. But, you know, just just pray. Sometimes that is what we're supposed to be doing. Pray for people. Amen? Do things God's way so you won't be down the highway wandering around aimlessly. If we start doing, you know, the church hasn't been doing things God's way. But if we start turning, repenting, and humbling ourselves and seeking his face, he will look down from heaven and he will heal our land. Amen. How many of you all know our land needs to be healed? Okay? We've got to humble ourselves and seek his face. And we've got to do things the Father's way. We've allowed church, we may not be participating in some of the sinful nature, but we've tolerated it. We've tolerated it maybe in our home. We've tolerated it maybe with the people that we're hanging out with. We've tolerated it. And, and God doesn't want us to do that. And so it's opened the doors to all this demonic activity. And that's what it is. It's evil to flow through our country. Come on. We got to start doing things God's way. Amen? Let's do it God's way. I plead the blood of Jesus over this word, and Father, I ask that you would seal this word today, that it would go forth and you would seal it to the hearts of the people, that they would bear much fruit, that they would bear much fruit from today's message. In Jesus' mighty name, amen? All right. Goodbye, Facebook. Look how 